you spent 10K in a short period of time. It was two to three weeks, right? Something yep. like that, yep. right? So to go as somebody who doesn't just have this money sitting on the table, you don't have any deal or anything connected to you to say, I'm gonna spend 10K on ads from my credit card. Yep. It's something we typically don't advise, right? Right. It was worth for me to take that risk in terms of like putting up like the budget for it, just because like Lucky is one of those songs where because it's not trendy, it's a timeless piece. 10 years from now, people are gonna be looking up the covers to the song. I felt like Lucky was no exception to that, and I, that's where I kind of took the, the risk to be like, all right, let's, let's, let's go, and that's what happened. So you, it was a business credit card that you were using, or did you have to go like get a loan specifically There's a for few that? business credit cards, so like, okay. um, this is my philosophy of funding. I'd rather have it, not need it, than need it and not have it. Because when you're gonna go look for funding and you, the bank can tell that you really need it, it's like, man, like, so I ended up getting a few more credit cards than I needed, but one credit card was about 10K that I had. Um, this is like some sauce. I'm not like a credit guru guy, but like, you can, uh, you can Google this stuff on your, on your own time, but like there, essentially there's three bureaus, right? And you can pull from either Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian. You can only have a certain limit to how many credit cards you can get per, um, Per bureau, but if you know how to stack the cards correctly, you can get upwards of like six to eight cards and have those. So like, I'll give you like a game plan. You, you do what you will with it. But my game plan um, was like, I have a personal reporting line that's about 10 to 15K, right? So they do something called comparative credit. If I apply for a business credit card, they're gonna try and see what type of credit inquiry or credit um, history that I've built up. So I have a regular credit card that's been about 15k so i got one card that was about 15k so in terms of credit stacking because you can pull a couple cards from each bureau i was able to get about six cards before um, i fully was able to um, utilize what it was that i was going for you know so but that's cool because like at the end of the day i'm just saying you spent 10k in a short period of time it was two to three weeks right something yep. like that yep right so to go as somebody who doesn't just have this money sitting on the table. You don't have any deal or anything connected to you to say, I'm going to spend 10K on ads from my credit card. Yeah. It's something we typically don't advise, right? Right. But you broke some numbers now, and, and then you specifically compared it into to getting a deal and what it would look like to re-up. Do you remember that conversation? Sort of. Like, I remember having it. I don't remember exactly what I said at the okay. time. So you were looking at how fast Lucky was moving, the amount of money you were getting from Spotify. And how much, how fast I can recoup. And how fast you thought you could recoup. And then you compared that, well, hey, I can give away some of this, a piece of my music and things like that to a label or a distributor or something like that. Or I could just get this loan and recoup. And I think you recouped that 10K in about, what, three, four months? Yep. Like, that's a beautiful thing, right? It is a beautiful thing. And the only reason I was able to do it that way is like I spent you know, as much as like Lucky blew up in 2023, I spent three years trying to figure out how to make content go and how to be able to recruit. Cause like, I can kind of see my statements engaged. Like, okay, I was able to stream this month. This is what it ended up looking like two, three months later when I got the royalty payout. So that was like a risk that um, I was able to take partially because like a lot of the business credit you can do, they'll have an intro or a grace period of like 12 months, no interest, right? Or 21 months, no interest. So like knowing that I can fall back on my day job and write off some of the expenses. Like for me, 10K, as much as it was a lot of money to spend at the time, it was in the grand scheme of things, still a drop in the ocean. I can say that, and that doesn't apply, that's not advice to everyone to go get credit cards and rack that rack it up. Cause it's like, I only knew that based off like me knowing that I had a four and a half cent cost per click and it's already doing X amount of streams at the time. And that I already have like things in place. So if I need to gas it even more, instead of pulling from one credit card, I got like five, right? I got six, like, so if I really had to bust down and take it even further than I could have, but just to, just to be able to recoup and then some, for me was very rewarding. And I'm very grateful for that too. Okay, so one of the most important things that artists have to realize, if you truly become a brand, then everybody that buys from you no longer has to be a fan. I know that sounds mind boggling. 
you have people buy from you, who support your career, who support your movement that aren't even fans. But the truth is regular businesses do this every single day. And that's how we had this realization that we then began to capitalize off of with our artists. And if you wanna see this for yourself, I'll show you for completely free. If you go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize, you have to put in www. And if you're on YouTube, you can find it in the description somewhere. So just go there and I'll show you the massive paradigm shift that we had that allowed us to start to help our artists monetize their audience way faster while increasing the amount of people that they can monetize at the same time. So basically a lot more money, you know what I'm saying? So check it out, www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize while it's completely free to check out. Back to the conversation. I think you might've had some labels at that time, kind of like reaching out possibly, or you could have like gone that route or gone some labels or distribution deals. They were reaching out after Lucky was blowing up or dur during and after. During mm -hmm. and after. Yep. Why didn't you go take any type of deal to try to figure out how, blow, uh, how to blow it up versus the route that you did take? Man, I feel like the label conversation honestly would be, it might be more in depth than my explanation of how I got lucky to kind of blow up. Cause I have a lot of like kind of thoughts about that. But um, I'll say with labels, like at that time, I didn't, before Lucky was blowing up, I didn't have any label that I were reaching out, anything like that. It was just like, all right, I kind of came into the early 2023 20, with like this album, like, all right, I'm just gonna drop and gas this stuff as if Lucky, as if I didn't have a label, which I didn't. But um, like for me, as I was getting um, offers to like, have like Lucky be pushed when Lucky was blowing up. Um, I got a little confused or sidetracked because it's like, man, like, I, I could take some of these deals and I can get into a lot of that stuff more in depth after talking about how Lucky blew up. But um, for me, it was like, all right, I have like these credit cards that I got business credit from. I'm gonna take those and gas it with like the ads I was running. You know, I was already putting money into the campaign um, for the influencer stuff and then just testing, testing the ads beforehand. So like even though my limit was 10K, like the amount of production I had beforehand, I'm like factoring it in like the music video, the live sessions I was shooting, um, building like the, the cover art, everything around Lucky, like yeah, the budget was 10K, but like over the span of three years, it's probably honestly more. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.